Hello all, my name is Tyler. And I'm John. And together we are DeLon Rigging Solutions, or DRS for short. All right, now that we've talked a little bit about wire rope bridles and how we calculate the lengths of them using the Pythagorean theorem and uh, the basic elements of calculating those bridle lengths, let's look at what the weight load implications are on the building or on the structure. In this case, or in our example, we had two loads we talked about. One that was directly under the beam and one that was in between the two supporting structures. So it had to be bridled. First let's look at the dead hang. If we have a dead hang, that means that it's going to hang straight down and plumb and in that case, it's going to be a vertical load. There's no horizontal component because it's hanging plumb straight down. So it is just a vertical load. And we said it was 1,000 pounds. So it's a straight down load on the beam of 1,000 pounds. However, if we look at the other point, That we said was a bridle and let's say that it's about here so for this point we said it was eight feet out of plumb on one side and 12 feet out of plumb on the other side So that was 20 feet total between, and that it's eight feet out of plumb there, and 12 feet out of plumb there. And we said it was a thousand pounds. All right, so now we, we, we used to have, or in the other point, we had a thousand pound vertical load. If we take that same thousand pounds and we pull it into this bridle configuration, it takes some force to pull that point or push that point out of plumb. So when we put it out of plumb that way and hold it there with the bridle, it takes some horizontal force to keep that out of plumb. Similarly, over here, there's a vertical component to the load and there's a horizontal component to the load. The bridle, the wire rope, has a tension in it that's different than, it's a combination of the vertical load and the horizontal load. We'll talk about that tension and how to calculate that a little later. Right now, let's just look at the vertical loads and the horizontal loads. And actually, even the horizontal load, we'll save for later, but let's talk about one interesting tidbit about the horizontal load. The horizontal loads are equal to each other. If you think about that intuitively, this, this load is stationary per the bridle. If the loads were not equal, then it would be in motion. It would be moving. In order for it to be stationary, the two horizontal loads have to be equal and opposite. Going back to the vertical loads, we've only got a thousand pounds total, so the two vertical loads have to add up to the thousand pounds, but a portion of it is on each side of the bridle. So this is what's called an inversely proportional relationship because the side with the shorter distance has the greater amount of the load. Intuitively, again, that kind of makes sense. If the load is closer to plumb, if it's closer to this side than that side, then more of the load is going to be carried by this side. But that exact amount, to put a mathematical amount on that, we can use the distances to calculate that, that amount. Let's call this side that vertical load is uh, the reaction on the right, and it's the vertical part of the load. 
And over here, we're going to call this the reaction on the left, and it's the vertical part of the load. This reaction over here, the reaction on the right, vertical, is going to be a function of these distances. So we're closer to this side, but it's going to be this distance, 12, divided by 20, times the 1,000 pounds. So 12 twentieths is uh, 3 fifths, so it's going to be 60, 600 pounds. So this side here, the vertical component, is going to be 600 pounds. Now we have two ways now that we can get the other side. We can do two things. We can say, we can do the math again with the proportions. We can say that the reaction on the left is 8 twentieths of, of the total load. And we'll get uh, 2 fifths, so it's going to be uh, 400 pounds. All right, another thing that we could do, we could, because we know that the two vertical loads have to sum to the total vertical load, we could have said if the, the reaction on the right plus the reaction on the left has to equal the total. Once we have a value for the right, we had to 600 pounds first, we could have solved for the left and we would know then that by that method we would have a thousand minus six hundred and solve it that way. All right, so this gives us a way to calculate how much of this point, how much of this load is carried by this beam and how much is carried by this beam. In most buildings, that gives you some specifications for the amount of weight that's allowed on their structure. Um, they may identify it in different ways. They may say per beam or per panel point or per truss. There's a lot of different ways it can be defined, which can be fairly complicated, but it all breaks down to this building block. You start with how much weight from each hoist is going to the beam where it's connecting. We haven't talked about the horizontal loads. The horizontal loads can be a factor, but in most buildings, the specifications are going to be based on vertical loads. As long as you work within some basic, I'll say, rules of thumb, the horizontal load will not usually be an issue. If there's a concern that the horizontal loads are an issue, that's really a job for an engineer. I mean, I can show you, and we may in another session, talk about how to calculate that horizontal load. but if there's enough horizontal load for it to be in question, then there probably needs to be an engineer involved in that conversation. Let's talk about those rules of thumb. Let me, I'm going to erase a little bit of this here and make a little space. All right, so let's take a look at what some, some really rudimentary rules of thumb could be, should be. The first one that I generally teach is that each of these angles on a bridle leg, if this is a bridle, say we've got our, a load hanging from it, each of these bridles needs to be at 45 degrees 
minimum. They could be greater than 45, closer to plumb, but they shouldn't be less than, they should never be less than 45 degrees off of horizontal. If I put a thousand pounds on a bridle and disc configuration, there are 707 pounds of cable tension on each of these cables. We talked to, touched on cable tension earlier, but, um, and, and we'll, we'll look at it again in more depth later, but suffice it to say for right now, that the cable tension that we're talking about is the tension in this particular piece of wire and the tension in this piece, particular piece of wire. And because we're pulling the, the, the load out of plumb, and we have a vertical component and a horizontal component combining to create the tension in that wire. So at 1,000 pounds, at 45 degree angles on the bridle legs, that's 707 pounds on each side of the bridle. To look at a similar scenario, but with flatter angles, If we go to 30 degrees, and we hang a thousand pounds on that, then the cable tension, again we're talking about not the vertical load or the vertical component of these bridle legs, we're talking about the, the tension created in that bridle leg is going to be at a thousand pounds. It'll be one to one with the load on the bottom of the bridle for an equal bridle at 30 degrees off of horizontal. That is an absolute flattest any bridle ever should be. And that's too flat. That's too flat for a lot of reasons. Partly because it imposes way greater horizontal loads on the structure and partly because it's logistically very difficult to hang that bridle because it's trying to, there's so much horizontal force to that bridle leg that even before it's loaded, it's trying to pull the rigger off of the beam as he pulls it up and tries to make that connection. So 45 degrees, pretty happy. And unlikely to get into problems with the structure and horizontal loads on the structure. At 30 degrees, eh, we want to stay away from that. Flatter than 30 degrees is taboo because of this. If you load, let's say that this is a one ton hoist and you're loading the one ton hoist to the max. So it's got 2,000 pounds on it. Again, at 30 degrees, it's one to one. So you've got 2,000 pounds of cable tension on these bridle legs. If you go flatter, if you go less than 30 degrees, then this becomes greater than 2,000 pounds. So that means that on this cable, on this leg of the bridle, you're exceeding the working load limit of that wire rope. Even though your hoist load is still within spec. Your bridle leg is not, and it is exceeding the working load limit of that cable. The situation, the, one of the few situations where we might approach 30 degrees and it'd be okay, will be when you have a bridle that's out of plumb, a very small amount. So for instance, this point here, that's uh, only two feet, out of plumb, that bridle might look like this. So this angle here might be in the neighborhood of 30 degrees. But most of the load is over here on the other side. So the amount of horizontal load required to pull it only two feet out of plumb 
is not a huge amount. So this small angle here on this one side of the bridle is probably not a huge issue. Another rule of thumb, another way of looking at this that we might apply to that situation is that, for instance, where these are 45 degree angles, if we break that up, that means that these are both right triangles, and it means that this bottom of the bridle is a right, a right angle between those two bridle legs. We can look at that this way here, and this is actually less than, let's see, less than 90 degrees for this bridle, or this angle between the two legs of the bridle. If you maintain that, where that angle between the two bridle legs is less than 90 degrees, that means you're, you're building a bridle that's pretty similar to what I have here. And for all the reasons we talked about, helps avoid the horizontal loading and excessive tension on the cable. All right, so those are a few basic rules of thumb to keep in mind as you choose bridle lengths. Let's do one more example of a, of a weight distribution. So let's do one similar to this, this bridle here. I'm gonna redraw it up here. And we'll look at the math that goes along with that. Let's say that that point is right here just a couple of feet out of plumb. Let's say that that's two feet. That means that that's 18 feet. And let's say that, that's, uh, that this point is 750 pounds. We're gonna do a bridle, pretty similar to this. It's gonna be real, real not very far out of plumb on one side and then have one leg that's pretty flat. Draw it up here and get it up here where it's a little easier to see. So our point is two feet out of plumb. We've got a bridal leg here and a bridal leg here. This is still 20 feet. And I'm still going to go with a, a 20 foot bridle leg here and a 10 foot stinger. I've got 750 pounds for my load. I've got two feet out of plumb here. And that means that this distance to the other anchor point is 18. So my vertical load, my reaction on the right, and my reaction on the left, and there is still a horizontal factor, even though it's not a huge number, there is still a horizontal component, but just working with the vertical components again, our R sub R vertical part of the component is going to be equal to 18 twentieths, 20 being the, the total span, times the load. And I'll have to get the calculator out in a minute to do that, to do that math. Our left reaction of the vertical component is going to be 2 twentieths times the 750 pounds. Now my math is getting easier because 2 twentieths is 1 tenth. So 1 tenth to 750 is 75 pounds. So I'm going to be um, the vertical component on this side is going to be 75 pounds. 
And using that math, I can tell that my vertical component on the other side is going to be 675 pounds. Excuse me for doing the math in my head. I'll check it with the calculator in a minute. But I think that's right. So our right reaction, our, lo our vertical load on the right hand half of the bridle is 675 pounds. And our vertical component on the left hand side of the bridle is only 75 pounds. Again, intuitively, it's way closer to this side over here, so it makes sense that it will be carrying more of the load. All right, we could go ahead and do examples like this all day long, but the math is the same. No matter what the distances are, no matter what the load is, the configuration to calculate that loading is the same. It's always going to be proportional to the distances between the anchor points compared to where the load is at. Please remember that DeLong Rigging Solutions one-shot train videos are meant as general overviews. Every system is different. Every venue has different procedures. All statements made make certain assumptions about systems and venue similarities. Nothing can replace on-site training with a qualified individual. If ever you have a question or concern about rigging, do not hesitate to reach out to us or another qualified vendor in your area.